Module 5 Memory Functions and Their Relevance for Basic Skills The concept of working memory will enable you to understand why we need a minimum reading speed to understand text. Working memory contains what is in your mind right now. It has limited capacity. The faster we read a message, the more time we have to fit into working memory, connect it with prior knowledge, and thus understand it. Educated people process text fast and retrieve background knowledge within the capacity of their working memory, so its limits are not obvious. But marginalized students may recognize text slowly, if at all, and they may have little knowledge to retrieve quickly. Thus, working memory capacity is a critical, important variable in decoding and comprehension. If you don't read fast enough, by the end of a sentence, you forget the beginning. After completing the module, you will be able to discuss the relationships between memory and reading comprehension and their significance. To process information, we must first attend to it. The input stays in a sensory register for one to two seconds. The signals travel through the visual system whose pathways must work well. Otherwise, children suffer from dyslexia. Then, the memory mechanisms take over. You can visualize memory as the biggest bottle in the world. It holds all your memories in cognitive networks and never fills to capacity. But it has a very narrow neck. Working memory. The working memory combines new information with what is already known and make sense of it. Our long-term memory store contains items linked in networks. To recall an item, we usually must know something about it, have prior information. If we can't find a hook to hang something, we forget it. If the information passes through the working memory, it must find a close match or hook and get attached somewhere in your cognitive networks. Then, it eventually may be consolidated into long-term memory. However, if parts of the message arrive too slowly or the message does not make sense, it may be forgotten. For simple text and limited prior knowledge, we ought to read a simple sentence of seven known words within about 12 seconds about 45 to 60 words per minute, in order to make sense of it. The visual word form area is probably sufficiently activated at this speed. This speed seems to hold for most languages and scripts. Early grade reading assessments show that at around 50 to 60 words per minute, students answer 80% of questions correctly. Various methods exist to count words per minute across orthographies. Listen to this Peruvian child who can read five words per minute. If a child reads this passage at five words per minute, by the end of a sentence, the beginning may be forgotten. Do. Don. To, don, to, mas. Co. Pro, go, no, cu, a, cu, a, tro, du, pro, Listen to this Peruvian child who can read 35 words per minute. If a child reads 35 words per minute, he is more likely to make sense of the text. She or he may answer two to three out of five questions, possibly the first and last ones. Don't Tomás 
compró cuatro burros, montó en uno y volvió a su casa. Por el camino los contó uno, dos y tres mo con estaba el que montaba y ya. Ya en su casa dijo a su... Fast readers use most of their working memory thinking about the meaning and implications of a message, whereas slow readers use up their energy in recognizing letters. The latter may have little time to process the message before it disappears, so they may understand little of what they read. This graph from the early grade reading assessment in Ghana illustrates the relationship between comprehension and reading speed. The faster the students read, the higher their comprehension scores, if they know the language. In general, we tend to remember the beginning and end of units. And when our working memory is stretched to capacity, we tend to remember the beginning and the end of texts and forget the middle. Readers in foreign languages need time to search for word meanings, so to comprehend, they may have to read faster. Of course, they must also know vocabulary. Some students may read their native language with sufficient speed, but still not understand text well. They may lack vocabulary or situation knowledge. About 10% of students may have attention deficits or working memory that is too short. See more in the module about comprehension. Due to working memory capacity, we need to act in milliseconds in everything we do. A few milliseconds of delay in each link of a performance chain can be significant. The milliseconds add up, and we may run out of working memory. To complete the various procedures we do, from cell phone checking to starting the washing machine, we must execute various actions fast and without thinking too much. Therefore, fast performance of all basic skills should be an instructional goal. If a calculation takes a few extra milliseconds to perform, students may forget what they are doing. With some practice, the mind links items of information together. Chunks are pieces of information that usually go together. We learn from experience that when we see one, we are likely to see the next. Seven letters become one word, and then words may become one sentence. Linked items pass through working memory as one chunk. Therefore, chunking is one of the most essential learning functions. Progressing from smaller chunks to bigger ones is an essential feature of memory. Without practice to combine small chunks, larger ones cannot be built. A few trials enable us to create chains of items that are likely to go together. Numbers, letters, movements, all sequences can turn into chunks with practice. The mind seeks patterns and learns them easily, and children are expert pattern detectors. This helps them learn much from their environment informally, without explicit instruction. This same ability must be used better in literacy. Patterns make easy chunks. Pattern detection therefore speeds up chunking and facilitates automaticity. Reading instruction must include explicit instruction on the rules and patterns related to various sounds and parts of speech. These include comparisons such as ka, ba, za, da, la, or ak, ab, as, ad, al, and contrasts such as ka, ki, ku, K, ko. Traditional syllabaries have used these. How big chunks do we start with? It depends on the size of the chunks already in your prior knowledge about a topic. The smallest chunk for reading is a letter. If we try to swallow chunks that are too big for our experience, 
we cannot easily learn them. A parent or teacher must help break them down. It's a bit like trying to eat an entire bunch of grapes versus one grape at a time. Big visual chunks take more trials to learn. That's why starting from whole words is difficult, particularly for children in poor environments. Do you still remember your hiragana characters? Let's assume you have managed to memorize most letters. Can you now start reading to learn? If you read as slowly as the first grader, would you understand the words? Can you progress to bigger chunks in Japanese without knowing the small ones? Imagine that after two weeks in a Japanese language school, your teacher is progressing in instruction. Now students, you have learned the earlier letters, and here is a new one. Can you follow this teacher? Then view an actual classroom event and predict whether rural Nepali students who know just a few letters can follow this teacher. Forming letter shapes facilitates their recall. Writing instruction takes time. Automaticity depends on visual detection so when students' time is limited, writing could be taught after the basic alphabet. To write, students must know the corresponding letter sounds. If they do not, they must just copy letter shapes. In poor classrooms, students may copy for years without knowing the sounds. The bobbing head shows that the child is copying piece by piece and does not know the entire shape. Watch the video of children in Mozambique drawing letters. The more we know about a topic, the more we will retain if given new information about it. Poorly educated teachers may remember less because they have less prior knowledge on which to hang new knowledge. They may also process new information too slowly to fit into working memory. People who are well educated may overestimate teachers' reading speed. Some teachers' guides therefore tend to be dense with information and diagrams, or teachers are expected to memorize and reproduce long lists of complex activities. This might result in cognitive overload. Pre-service and in-service training courses must take this cognitive overload issue into account. See module on teacher performance. Illiterates may not realize that words are made up of individual sounds. Phonological awareness exercises are needed to identify beginning, middle sounds, and also syllables. For English, beginning and final sounds are important. Analysis to the syllable level is intuitive and easy, but analysis to the phoneme level is not. Students ought to receive oral phonological awareness exercises during the early stages of instruction. Nevertheless, such exercises are more important in English than consistently spelled languages. Let's watch this video of Nicaragua with students practicing phonological awareness exercises. Ahora vamos a juntar sonidos en palabras. Escuchen los sonidos. M, E, A. ¿Qué palabra es? Mesa. Danelia. Ahora escuchen.
escuche los sonidos. U, E, N, A. Sueña. Muy bien. A ver, Dayana, quiero que me mencione los, los sonidos de la palabra misa. Muy bien. Los sonidos de la palabra misa son mmm y ah. Ahora todos juntos. In tonal languages, there is a need to develop tone awareness. In Africa, these include languages such as Hausa, Mandinka, More, Fongbe, Yoruba, and many others. In some languages, meaning heavily depends on the correct tones, while in others it is less important. It may be visually simpler to learn reading without tones at the outset, but students may not always understand. In African languages, tonal markings could be taught after the lowercase letters. Overall, working memory capacity determines minimal reading speed for comprehension. Speed is necessary for all basic skills. Individual letters must be retained, and writing helps. Then, letters must be chunked into increasingly bigger chunks. Analogies help form chunks efficiently. Phonological awareness helps map letters to sounds. Eventually, speed rises and reading becomes automatic. For all these items, explicit instruction and practice are necessary.